but how do you think he looked today? He looked good. Um, you know, I know it's, it's tough with, you know, your minutes are somewhat segmented. Um, so you don't get that long stretch, but um, just to have him out there, you know, in, in a live game, just getting a feel for it, getting back to that rhythm. Uh, I think it's good for him. And I, uh, I'd like to see uh, both him and Rui get more of it, you know, as, as we go, but we'll have to go uh, upon the advice of the medical and, and see where they are. But um, I was pleased with where, you know, how he performed and, and where he is right now. Um, do you have kind of like a plan mapped out in your mind in terms of how you're going to go about figuring out who looks good together, how much, you know, I want this guy to play here? Like, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Um, you know, we all have plans, <laughs> but it's just tough when, you know, you don't have a ton of practice time just to really get a detailed look at it, you know, to try different combinations. Because uh, when you're trying it, it matters. And of course, we have to kind of wait, find a way to get those guys back and get them, get them up to speed. But, um, you know, trying to pick and choose and get the, the right pairings is, is tough in, in this environment. Uh, so it, it's going to be a work in progress. And, you know, it's, it's easy to say, hey, we got it on paper. But, you know, it's very fluid throughout the game. How much does Brad being out for the time being make a difference there? Can you do kind of, because you know what he does, can you kind of just plug him in and, and kind of imagine? I mean, as far as he is concerned, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it once again, it affects the, you know, has a, a triple down effect as um, you're adding one more piece. And he's, he's been a big part of, you know, who we are. So, you know, that part matters. And you know, how those other guys kind of simulate with him, it just, you know, it's going to take time to shake out. You know, you've had this idea of what TV can add for months, but not seeing him, but actually going to see him out there. What do you think you can add it? Well, I think he's just, he's another skilled big. Um, you know, he's a big body, moves well. Um, you know, I think he can stretch the defense, you know, beyond three. Uh, you can play in the post, you know, so I think he, he adds a, you know, a different dimension. But, uh, you know, I, I, right now I don't want to, you know, heap too much on him, you know, for him to overthink it. I think his energy is infectious. He's going to play hard and uh, hopefully, you know, anchor our defense a bit. So um, I'm eager to see how it unfolds. But, you know, I, I don't have a ton of expectations to you – know, my, my, my priority right now is play hard, you know, play together. And for Trez, in L.A., he had a pretty big situation. And he kind of learned how to figure that out. But, like, for him to face it again, what do you – it, oh, it's it's not ideal, but you know I, I talk to those guys, and it is what it is, and there's no you know finesse way to do it uh, right now. Obviously, the minute restriction kind of helps, but you know it's I think it's a good problem to have. You know that we, we can pick and choose and you know, see how it works, and guys that are, are playing well at that, that point that point in the game, you know, that they'll continue. So it's not ideal for those individuals, but I think it's, you know, we're in a great shape organizationally. And of course, as a team, it gives us a lot of depth and flexibility. You kind of alluded to this pregame, but with, with Thomas coming back, you obviously haven't seen him play really in a few games now. How much of a feeling out process is it for you just kind of seeing where you can put guys, what different situations you can put guys in throughout the year? Yeah, it, that once again, it takes time. Um, you know, we've had you know, 40 plus games with a core group of players. Um, so, you know, we've added to some of the offensive package, we, you know, tweaked some things and added different wrinkles, you know, because we see now what best serves them. So to just kind of plug those guys in what we have, it would have to stay somewhat limited just for their own, you know, you know, comprehension. But as we go, you know, it's easy. Oh, you know, he obviously likes the right block. He wants to get to his left hand. Finding ways to use what we have to, you know, augment their ability and put them in the, in the correct spots. I know you're happy to win, but to see that performance on the defensive boards, how much does that detract from just how you felt the team played? Well, aside from the first possession when they got seven offensive rebounds, it wasn't terrible. Um, uh, some of those were timely, of course, but, you know, I think 18 for 18 points, you know, one-to-one -one ratio isn't awful, but yes, the 18 is a bit high. Um, you know, that's just it's just got to be a, uh, an area of concentration that, uh, you know, you, we hesitate at times. We ball watch um, and those possessions a lot of times can hurt you. So, you know, I thought defensively solid. I thought we did a lot of good things. Second half, they picked it up. Um, they were they were much more aggressive, um, obviously. But uh, the rebounding component, you know, it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's not just on the bigs and it just has to be a collective mindset. How do you size up Thomas as a defender? 
Uh, you know what? It's it's still for me. I'm not going to put out a judgment. I think I think he's going to be a really good defender. Um, but you know, I think he just has to kind of learn the nuances of what we do. You know, some of the terminology he's still picking up, um, the levels that we want him at pick and rolls. I think, uh, you know, depending on the scheme, he's going to have to kind of figure that out. Um, a lot of that just comes with reps. Uh, so it, it's going to take some time for him to get comfortable with, with some of those things. But I think he'll, I think it'll be solid. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's important for, especially for young players, just learning the league, you know, understanding time and score, you know, anticipating some actions, um, you know, whether it's you guarding a shooter, guarding, you know, a certain type of player, um, getting ahead of the play and taking, taking away a, a strength. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, live ball or but small sided three on three games, you know, and putting guys in different situations, you know, just one on one drills, muscle memory things um, that trigger, you know, so when it, when it does happen live, you're, you're not thinking, you're reacting. What did you think of Kyle's all around game? I guess he was one assist away from his first career. Triple yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even realize it until, you know, till the end, uh, you know, he, he's been able to rack up a number of, um, you know, very, very impressive performances. So it just, it's a, just another one in the bucket. You know, I, I obviously we're, we're thrilled that he's playing at such a high level, uh, you know, and he's stepped up obviously with Brad out and, uh, and we need it, but, you know, I think it's uh, obviously he's making those plays guys have to step up and make shots. Um, so I think it's a great, you know, balance, you know, that, you know, he's able to do those things and do it at a high level for us. Um, Rui the other night said that it was his decision that when he felt ready, he kind of went to you and said, okay, I can go tonight. Um, how and with whom did you guys kind of set out your approach to his time off? Um, I imagine that it, obviously you've said many times you want what's best for him, but there's also, was there any like nudging along and saying, you know, we're here for you, but here's what we think you should do next. Like, how no, that, that wasn't really, with, um, you know, on, on our end, you know, I think we were in constant con um, contact with his representation. So, you know, I think we were kind of lockstep with, you know, the, the pro progress he was making, uh, where he was and um, kind of mapped it out from there. So we were well aware of, you know, kind of the timeline, obviously COVID set him back a bit, but um, there were no real surprises. It was just more of, you know, when he's ready, we, we kind of earmarked a certain date um, and they aligned and it worked out well. When did you earmark that date? That was, you know, weeks ago. Why left the whole time? <laughs> when <laughs> be the last time? <laughs> uh, any word on how Brad is feeling? I haven't spoken to him today. I shot him a text earlier, um, so I can't answer that question, but I'm hoping he's feeling well. And it's just a you know matter of two negative tests, and you know, we can move on. Thank you, Neil. Hey, Coach. I know it's not an exact science, but how many games does it take for you to kind of feel out who you have available before you cut down the the rotation? Oh, well, so a lot of that's going to you know depend on how these guys respond from a medical standpoint. Um, you know, on, upon the advice of the you know, the medical st staff, they'll tell us, you know, can we ramp minutes up? And, you know, it's, it's tough to make a wholesale change, you know, if that's necessary, but, you know, you can't do that until guys are able to play those rotation minutes. So it, it may take a while. I'm, re I'm really not sure. Christos. Uh, hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, coach, tonight was the first back-to-back -back game of Spencer deal with this season. How satisfied you are about the effort and the energy overall uh, from him tonight? No, I think it was another, uh, you know, another good game for him. You know, we had a discussion last night um, into the third. He, you know, I was like, hey, I got to get you out. And he wanted to keep going uh, to his credit. And he was de defending well. He's playing well at that point. But, you know, I'm thinking I'm looking ahead. He's like, I need you in the fourth and I'm definitely going to need you tomorrow. And to see that he's available, uh, his knee has responded well. and it doesn't seem to be any hiccups. Um, is great. So we can kind of, you know, push forward, not having, you know, that, that be a concern for us, um, you know, or him. So uh, I'm glad things have worked out and he's in a good place and physically. I think he's, he's been uh, tremendous. And also Rui is back. Thomas is back. Uh, how that depth uh, you have in, in front court, how, how good problem for you is that to have those, uh, those solutions in, uh, 
both. Yeah, I think, it's, both. I think it's a great problem, uh, if you want to call it that. You know, we've talked at length about our depth um, and the amount of flexibility it gives us, the versatility. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, at times right now uncomfortable because we're trying to play a lot of guys and get guys acclimated. And the minutes are a bit choppy because of uh, some of that's the minute restriction. But I think once we kind of get a rhythm, um, you know, I think it, it works out in our favor. We, we have plenty of guys who can play various positions. We can downsize. You can play big, um, and there's really no drop off. So I'm eager to see how it shakes out, and you know I'm certainly glad to have uh, the vast majority of our group back intact. It was great. It felt great to be back, just to be out there with the team, play with them, you know, trying to get a flow back with them and everything. So it felt it felt great. How what was the lead up like? I guess today, were you? What were the emotions you were feeling? <laughs> my emotions were out of pocket. I was just trying to stay real calm and collective throughout the whole day, just, just all the way up to the game. <laughs> how, do you, sorry, I gonna, how do you feel physically afterwards? I feel great. I feel great physically. Uh, my wind is still under me. Uh, my legs feel great. My knee feels great. Uh, overall, I just I just really feel fantastic. Like I feel well conditioned as well. You know, like your team that you kind of do and how scheduled it feels like just to do that. Like, what do you kind of do for a game day or something? Right? Well, I do a lot of stuff, especially from my lower body extremities and everything, and core work, and just getting into that flow and that rhythm of just being able to do that, and then actually putting that into the game. It just felt great. And you were on the bike. Just getting ready, like yeah. <laughs> you're fast or yeah, not too fast, not too fast. Just trying to keep my body warm. That's the main thing. What was the biggest challenge for you over the last two months? Uh, shoot, the biggest challenge for me is really just trying to stay patient for this moment. Uh, a lot of times where you just feel great, you just want to hop up and play with the team right then and there, but you know you gotta you gotta stay disciplined with what you have to do. So I think that was the biggest thing for me. And, and who is it? Were you able to find that patience all on your own? Oh, well, yeah. Who was yeah. your best uh, patience advisor? <laughs> well, a lot of it came from me of just like trying to stay the course and trying to stay level headed throughout this injury and everything. And then a lot of my friends and family helped me a lot as well, just, you know, being there with me, talking with me, and, you know, just being there for my best interest. How do you feel like this time away affected you as a player, as a person? Man, it, it's, it's tough being, a, being away from something that you love so much. And, you know, like I said before, you almost have a new found of, like, appreciation and, and a whole new found of love for the game of basketball when you get it back. And when you're able to do it and when you're able to do what you love, it's you, you kind of cherish it even more now. And you got a great look on the first shot. What did you kind of make of Going in and, uh, just like <laughs> no, I, I shot it because it was open. I, yeah. I wasn't even planning on shooting. I wasn't even planning on shooting that first shot, but it, luckily it came my way. So, Thomas, you obviously have a new coach this year. You didn't really get to play a lot last year. So Wes kind of talked about the difficulties of really kind of figuring out where you fit in and kind of things like that. I mean, I mean, what's your process been like with Wes? Just as you know, everybody else has had a half a season training camp, preseason. How have you kind of blended with him so far? Well, I've been blending with him pretty good uh, periodically on and off the court. You know, he's been to every almost every workout that I've had. Uh, he's seen the preparation. He's seen he's seen me play live and all the way up to all the way up to today. So I feel like we're in a good spot. You know, of course, it's going to take some time and you know gain some chemistry between each other and everything. But it's a great it's a great set. The three like the three of you guys as centers, you guys can all do different things. How how helpful is that uh, for a team? Oh, it's helpful so much because you can just you can just like it's always next man up, and no matter down the line, you can always look at me, Gaff, Montrez, and know that you're gonna get the best out of us every night. So there's no there's no layoff on either one of us. Honestly, was it easy for you to kind of keep the blinders on? There was so much going on around you with the team, and, and I'm sure you were thinking about like, well, where am I gonna fit in, and what this new coach is gonna be like with that. Easy for you to kind of keep your mind on the recovery stuff. Well, yeah, it was easy for me because I, for me, it was just trying to make sure that I can control what I can control and just make sure that I'm ready for whatever that's coming out of there. You know, uh, there's different things that we have to go through in life, and you know, these are just another obstacle that you have to go through. And what I really try to focus on is just control the controllables. How cool was it? Um, 
when you checked in, but hear your name announced and the crowd, and I don't know if you heard it or what was that like for you? Yeah, it was great. You know, I couldn't help but smile, and I tried not to smile when I was out there, <laughs> but uh, I couldn't help but smile because, it's, like I said, it's been so long, and just from a year, just be able to hear that again, it just brings back brings back memories, and then it also also has me prepared to make new ones. So, what do you think is next for you? What would you like to? I guess it's like a checklist of what the next goal. Is. Next goal for me is just. Keep sustaining my energy, keep sustaining what we have here, and just continue to help this team win. That's the biggest thing right then and there. Um, there's no step forward or anything like that unless it's with the team. And how cool was it when you went in and immediately matched up against Rolo, an old teammate, and <laughs> matching up against other old teammates as well, Nolan and Sko? Um, was there any banter? What was that all like? Well, it was not too much banter. It was guys just, just telling me congratulations and happy to be back and everything. And it, it was fun to go at those guys a little bit, you know, seeing them on the other team instead of us always going at it in practice before. So it was good. Did you immediately trust the knee back? I feel like when uh, athletes sometimes come back from that, they're like, until you do it for the first time, you're still like, oh my gosh, it's going to come out. <laughs> nah, I, I completely trust it. I've gotten over that. I got over that hump a real long time ago because I, just never try to go out there and play injured. You know, if you go out there and play injured, then you're going to get injured. <laughs> That's my mentality about it. So just try to go out there, just play my game the way I know how to, and and don't think about the surgical knee and everything like that because it's as good as brand new. Why should, why should I worry? <laughs> Neil. Hey Thomas, uh, first off, welcome back. For you, when you you know spent the time, you know, a few months, how have you gotten to just to learn your new teammates? Um, you know, the team talked a lot about chemistry and just building that foundation early in the year. Well, it was real big. A lot of it was with me just being a part of practice, being a part of games, being a part of shoot arounds and everything that we talked about. I tried to try to be a sponge and just and just try and grasp all the information that they talked about. And then just watching my guys out there when when they're playing, it's just seeing the tendencies of how they like to play, where they like the balls, and and just how they like to play overall as a team out there. So it was a good, it's, it was good. Just It's just a learning experience for right now, you know, the first game back. But I know we're getting more chemistry as time goes on. Do you feel like terminology wise, knowing all the plays, knowing all the schemes on defense, you're you know pretty well caught up and you know it's not that hard of an adjustment to make now on the fly? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been doing my film work. So <laughs> I'm, I've been knowing the plays and defensive coverages and I try to pay attention as much as I can when I'm out there, even when I was out. What were your just impressions of Thomas Bryant, just getting to know him before this and how do you think he did? Um, I kind of knew to you before this, uh, just in general, uh, whether that's working out with Rico together, um, and, you know, getting that third in the summer, um, even going through numerous amount of workouts, um, leading up to this situation. So I kind of knew, like, how his game was, and I uh, played against him a lot in open runs uh, without training to Rico Hines. So I kind of knew what he was going to bring to the table, man. It was just good to see him get back out there and just get back to, you know, being on the court, um, going through a situation how he went through. Um, you know, I know it kind of just basically killed him for him not to be able to play and having to, you know, just keep, um, you know, building this up back up to get to today, you know. So just good to see him back out there and, uh, you know, for him to knock on his first shot was big. And, you know, you have a, another three-man center rotation that you've dealt with in the past. I, I, does that help you this time around with dealing with something like that? Uh, honestly, no. Nah, but at the end of the day, it's not really up to me to kind of, you know, worry about those situations or, you know, how we're going to figure those things out. Um you know, like I said, when I'm out there before, I just play my game to the best of my abilities and do all the little things that help us win the game. Trez, obviously your moment with KCP became public last night. What happened there and how, I guess, often is that over the course? Often just do things like that happen over the course of an 82-game season? Um, who we played last night? OKC. Uh, uh, we played OKC. We came out with a, a game plan and we won the game. Next question. Is that good? Or you if you ain't talking about it again tonight, then we we can end this conversation right now, bro. I'm not about to sit here and do this with y'all. You're not about to get nothing out of me. I told y'all what I said on social media, and that's the end of it. Sham gave y'all something that y'all wanted, so you better try to pick and find your story out of that.
Well, look like that's trash night to me. Y'all have a good one. Good try, though.